deck is all set up. And the doors, my mother-in-law has done two rugs. Um, they're still on the loom. Got a few on here. Um, I am doing my first one. I still had uh, one that these colors were requested by someone and they didn't care what I did, so I'm kind of playing. And this is what I call kind of the melted crayon look. So this is all black down here and then of course, here are the colors the individual requested to go with the black. And I will do a quick video on how I do this. I had a few people interested in how I did this. I have done one where the color was in the center and then the black on both sides. And it looked, uh, when it was this, looked like kind of like the moonlight on the water. Um, the, I'd done ones with the, the reds and oranges and yellows. And that looked like a sunset. Um, and that was really pretty. So this one kind of, I'm going to call it like melted crayon look. Um, look at it kind of that way. So I will do a quick video. Very simple. This is made out of t-shirt yarn. Um, this style does take a lot longer because you're hand feeding instead of using the shuttles. So this is t-shirt yarn. Pretty simple to make. Um, I have a thrift store so I get a lot of t-shirts that are stained or just don't sell. No one wants to buy the running shirts and the school shirts. So very easy cut and then you stretch them. I'll do a video maybe on that if people are interested. So um, very simple to do. Usually everyone's got t-shirts. They have family members that have holes or stains and they don't want them. These were all probably had some sort of issue and you don't even know it after you run it through them. So and is a close up. So if they go on the shuttle, I've got the black on the shuttle. And they run it through. So I still hand feed this. Um, I found it a little easier because um, I have to cut each one for wherever I want it. So I haven't really been using the shuttle. And I think I'm already at like almost 30 inches. So this one's going to be about 40, 42 inches when I'm done. This style, I am starting with the the black. On this end, and I want a kind of a drip look, so I'll start with the black, and then I'll go with my next color. So I'll open the shed. Feed it in. Oops. Like I said, it takes a little more time because you're gonna feed it in by hand. Um, but if you want to do anything fancy with inlay or anything, both the same way. So about halfway, wherever I feel like to do it. Um, I beat it in, but I am not switching the shed because I want my next color to fall within the seam shed that that one was in. So feed that with the overlap and beat it in. Now I'm going to switch my shed. I have two tails now. And I just kind of figure out where I would like, if I want a longer line or drip kind of look, I'll go to a little longer. Um, and I gotta remember, I lose a little bit because of stretch and then going around this thread, it's actually not there. So I want to compensate just a hair for that. And then of course, with my black, I want a little overlay. And I trim that down. So I'm going to start with the black again. Just because if I put this one in, it's going to be like a solid color drip coming down. If I put my black in, it's going to make it look like two drips. So you can see there's blue and then black and then blue. If I do them together, you get this solid drip. So I can change it up if I wanted to say one big long drip or line of color. Like I said, this is kind of like the crayon melted crayon look is what I'm kind of going for with this one so feed my black in it down I've not packed it in very tight I just so I can have this one lay over the top nicely so feed it in uh, I do pull a little tight and then make sure I get a little plenty at the end and then I beat it in now this one the black didn't quite separate it but that's okay 
And then I switch my feet and I have a new shed. So both colors go in, switch it, the other ends go back in. So here's my black. I'm going to switch out my color. These colors are kind of like the beach glass look. Um, we live uh, on Lake Michigan, so we get some beach glass um, here on our lovely beaches. We have one of the best beaches right near where I live to get beach glass, so it's kind of a favorite color look. So, feed that in. Sometimes I just cut it right away at the end. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of tapering it. I like that trailed look. Get my other color in. Lots of company over here at the in-laws today. So you'll hear some talking in the background. Sunday, we all get together. It's wonderful. All right, so I think I'm gonna trail it off a little shorter. And feed my black up. And I already switched the shed. It's automatic habit now, I guess. Bring that down, keep the shed the same. I probably advance this already. So I seem to pull pretty tight on that side. So I always give it a little, I guess a pluck of that end string string and it's in there. So now I can close that shed and start the next one. And I am going to advance this a little bit. So with this new curl rack where you learn that just a little bit of a pop, but it's still very tight. Um, and then we just pull it forward. Before I'd have to stop here and then finish tightening it up, but you know, I just stopped a little bit. And... So, I like how that advances now, really fast. And I'm going obviously pretty slow so everyone can see how this goes. Bigger shed, much faster to feed in. Oh, already did the green. And I guess I could cut strips ahead of time, but I, I don't know what width I'm, length I want. It's all by feel. So my black stem ends there and I obviously want it overlap so I know I have to go a little bit past it. Tension is really good with the creel rack. I think it's even better than it was before. It feels like it was loose sometimes, but as I, I go, then it, it, it's actually fine. So I think what we're gonna do is, I use the, the fleece for a divider, and I think that can mess with the tension just a little bit. I'm actually gonna do what people use, the um, like those dehesion blinds or whatever they're called. Um, so just cut those up, those vertical blinds, and uh, use those as dividers. And that won't, when you put that fleece in, you get this kind of little bit of a curve because of it, because of the tail. And I think that messes with it a little bit. So uh, when some bad ones come in at the store, then I'll end up uh, reusing them and repurposing them. So. I'll make some for doors and I'll have some for my rack. So you can already see how far I've gotten. So. I like how it's turned out. You get these little tails. You can trim those off if you don't like them. So 